Hi folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Brand Life Coaches, coaching in fact. Um, I'm back in Indianapolis here. I call it World Headquarters, my uh, uh, new office with my big TV. I am uh, streaming live on both Facebook and YouTube at the same time with uh, no assistance. Uh, so if I'm not looking at the right camera, it's because I'm looking at the other camera. So uh, I'll do my best to try to uh, connect with people. Check this out. Uh, I don't know if you can see my shirt. Uh, Renda and I spent a weekend down in Brown County. The, the shirt says, storms make trees take deeper roots. Storms make trees take deeper roots. And I saw this and I saw the family tree. Soren, hey. Hi, Annie. Um. I don't see people who are joining on Facebook very much. So if I don't say much to the Facebook people, I'm not uh, leaving you out. Uh, the shirt is for sale. You can get it at Brown County State Park. I think it's just something that they put together to sort of represent a message to the park. Hey, uh, uh, Jenny. Uh, hi, there is somebody I can wave. Uh, I can't wave to you guys. Hi, Suzanne. So, um, Renda and I, uh, over from Thursday till Tuesday, we uh, rode a uh, new motorcycle that I rented for her, and I drove my Road King down to Brown County. Um we took a um, pontoon boat ride, a paddle boat ride, a bicycle ride. We rode horses. Uh, we rode in my convertible, and we rode my other car. Hey, Jenny. Um, so uh, we had a really good time, really good time. She took me to Applebee's. Um, okay. So... Uh, uh, I am going to be sharing about the topic, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Doesn't that sound like badass? The four horsemen of the apocalypse. I'm going to take this to this thing and then it won't fall over. Um, WB Normal has been waiting for me, buddy. I think he's talking to me. So um, the four horsemen of the apocalypse is a concept constructed by a, a guy named John Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N, John Gottman. And um, the, the information, ch hey, Chuck, what's up? People are able to say hi on Facebook. What's up? Um, this is information adapted from John Gottman's book, The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. Oh, and um, it was adapted by uh, Joanne B. Kim um, from allofmecounseling.com. So uh, you guys know uh, the, the biblical... Uh, reference to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I should have looked that up. I meant to look that up. I know there's a red horse, a gray horse, a white horse, and different ones of them mean different things. Hi, David. Hi, Anonymous. Hi, Stacy. Got all kinds of folks showing up in the house here. This is sort of fun doing it to two different... Uh, uh, live stream uh, crowds. This is the first time I've 
I've done a live stream on uh, a long one on uh, Facebook. I did a few shorter ones. So basically, the, 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 the four horsemen of the apocalypse is uh, four really uh, bad things that uh, can happen. I miss you too, Chuck. Uh, all is well. I hope all is well with you. Um, four really bad ways of behaving, bad energy, bad juju, if you will. Juju. It's a fun word to say. Um, and I'm going to go through all four of these. Um, I used to tell a story about John Gottman, and, I, and it turns out I had the story wrong. This is what I used. I've been saying this for 30 years. Um, that this guy is a marital researcher and he could spend um, uh, 15 seconds watching a video. And in that 15, uh, okay, Annie says the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. Awesome. Um, that's taken from Book of Revelation and it's really bad shit, all right? So Gottman just turned it, turned the really bad, you know, shit from the end times into really bad shit in marriage to, to loosely, you know, sort of describe it. Um, but but I told this, this story that he could watch a 15-second um, clip of a video of a couple interacting, and then they would follow up the, uh, the the research and and 15 years later he would prognosticate from watching the 15 second clip whether this couple would be married 15 years later and he would get 98 percent of them right it turns out hey Lance it turns out that it was more like 15 minute clips Instead of 15 seconds, it always sounded really impressive when I said 50. I wasn't trying to exaggerate. That's just sort of what I thought. But anyway, he's probably the world's most famous marital researcher. Well, he is. But <clears throat> here's four really negative energies that can happen in relationships. So... Um, Here's, here's the thing. Um, I've been uh, thinking about what my message should be uh, on this channel. You, you know what I'm really, really, really good at is couples counseling. If you got a couple that's stuck or uninsightful, uninspired, I'm pretty good. Um Back in 2015, 16, 17, I was on fire for talking about narcissistic abuse syndrome. I've sort of grown through that and grown up from it. Um, Suzanne says Gottman also wrote Eight Dates, which is a great book. Uh, Su Suzanne, uh, write a little more about Eight Dates. I'm intrigued. It sounds like a movie. Um, so when I talk about relationship issues, I get like three, uh, people that watch the video, they're badass videos. I'm telling you the, 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 Hey, there's my wife. Um, I made a video, uh, the last one, I forget what it was about. It was really good, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, but, uh, it was one, I think it was one of the best videos that I'd ever made. Um, didn't get a lot of viewership. Listen, um, when I'm talking about relationships, it doesn't have to mean a romantic relationship. It can be a relationship with your kids. If you hear Polly, uh, coughing, uh, hi, uh, Morenal, am I saying it right? 
Moreno. Um, Holly was uh, at the pokey. He was in the pokey. He was, he was uh, uh, at the uh, dog kennel, and I think he's got a kennel cough, and he's carrying on with himself. You know what? I'm going to show you guys. Let me see if I can reach this over. I don't think I can reach it over far enough. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. You can't see it. Shoot. <laughs> I got the coolest thing. I'm going to turn this. So you can see it. I got the new aquarium with fake jellyfish. I'm going to leave it like that, even if you can't see me. We're, we're going to have the jellyfish. Maybe we can name the jellyfish like we named Fernando. Those are fake, but I really like them. They swim around. Does anybody remember what we were talking about? Um, oh, uh, Jill again. Hello. Uh, Annie says the jellyfish looked mesmerizing. I could look at them all day. Um, so, um, I'm going to share what I'm good at and trust me when I tell you that, uh, Focusing on narcissistic abuse syndrome is hopefully not a lifetime project for you. Hopefully it's something you get healthier for. Hey, you can see Polly too. There's Polly the wonder dog. You can't see, but he's wearing a diaper. We, we got jellyfish. We got Mr. Polly. That, uh, this isn't for you Facebook people. You can't see it, but on YouTube, jellyfish and Mr. Polly. Um, Anonymous says, what do you want your channel to be about? Uh, that's a really good question. I would like the channel to be about whatever I'm inspired to talk about. I don't just make videos to make videos. Um, I believe that God speaks to me. I believe the universe speaks to me. I believe when I pay attention to my life, I learn things. I believe when I pay attention to my clients, the people I learn the most from are my clients that I get inspired. And um, <laughs> Renda's watching on Facebook now too. Hi, honey. Let me wave at you. Um. So tonight, I didn't really get inspired. I've been busy with my wife for the last five days. I just have this one handout. Uh, hey, Patricia Harrison. Hey, how you doing? I wave at her too. Um, and this one handout at, uh, that, that I saw online, but it's so rich with material. I, I think I could fit, fill in an hour and a half. So, um, thank you, Annie. Mr. Polly's been doing really good. He had ugly booger things, bloody nasty things on his head and his eye, and, and I, he had surgery, and it's all better. So, so uh, the first uh, horseman of the relationship apocalypse is criticism. Being critical. Let me show you something. I, I've shown you this before. If you've watched very many videos, you, you've seen this. But uh, there's four ways that you can see yourself and see others. I'm going to draw four circles. And I'm going to put two digits in each circle. And we're talking about criticism. So the first circle is plus and a plus. So two digits on each circle. The first one is plus, plus. So the first plus is about yourself. So a plus is, hi, Marlene. Is this going to be a Bible lesson? I'll probably throw a quote of Bible in there somewhere. 
uh, Marlene. I bet you I will. The first plus is how you see yourself. So that's, hey, I got issues. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm imperfect, but I mean well, and I work on my stuff, and I'm cool. I'm good. Um, Lance says that you have to grow out of obsessing with narcissism when you learn enough to understand what happened to you and how you deal with it uh, when you see it. That's what I was saying. Uh, Andrea says, hi, Mark, you're alive. Or I'm live. <laughs> I'm not alive. I'm live. I am live. Uh, hi. Um, Lance, let me say that again. Um, Anonymous says, um, uh, you guys kick ass. I mentioned you on my website and several articles I wrote. Woked, I wrote on your Tango link there. I just referred somebody from my website to you. Cool. So um, David agrees with Lance. You have to outgrow obsessing with narcissism when you learn enough to understand what happened to you and how to deal with it when you see it. And frankly... I've outgrown focusing on narcissistic abuse. I'm healthier. You know what I've grown, learned how to do? Uh, I'm learning how to be a grown-up man, uh, which makes uh, my wife happy when I act like an actual grown-up. So the second plus is the world in general and your partner in particular. So a plus would mean, yeah, people do occasionally fly airplanes into towers. Um, that That is something that, that has been known to happen. And God only knew that this coronavirus thing could happen. How weird and strange and awful and surreal has this been? I did not know the world could, could get so out of control and dark and negative. However, Plus Plus says that the world is still a good place. Most people are well-intentioned and most people are good people. So that's plus plus. That's the healthy one. Plus minus is criticism. What Dr. Gottman is saying is the first horseman of the apocalypse. Plus minus is I'm cool, but you suck. I'm the plus, you're the minus. I'm the victim, you're the perpetrator. I'm offering criticism. Let me let me uh, share from uh, uh, this this sheet here. Criticism is attacking the character of your partner at their very core. It's different from having a complaint. Hey, uh, Steve uh, Bivens is watching on. Uh, FaceTime. He normally watches on YouTube. What's up? I'm going to wave to you. Um, it's different from a complaint which focuses on the behavior. It's fine to make a complaint to your partner, um, but criticism is why can't you do this right and what's wrong with you? That would be an example of a criticism. What my wife and I do is, hi, Shard. Shard says hello. Uh, uh, Rennell says narcissists are very plus minus thing. That is very true. Um, what my wife and I do is we, we use the words, may I be authentic? Um, last night, my website was down. Um, I was having a 
issue uh, with a company that was actually uh, uh, being uh, unethical and cheating me out of money, and I was a little stressed about that. My lips got something on them. Um, and um, uh, I was writing an email, and Brenda came over, and she said, may I give you a pointer? <laughs> She didn't sneak up on it and say, and may I be authentic? She said, may I be, give you a pointer? I looked at her and said, my website is down. I'm dealing with that crisis. I'm dealing with this other problem. I'm trying to share an email, but yes, go ahead and bless me with your pointer. And she goes, breathe. Just breathe. I'm like, Okay. Ah, you know what? It helped. It helped to, to breathe. So um, when, when Renda shares with me, may I be authentic, she, she isn't maligning my character. She isn't being reactive. She isn't being critical. She just saying, this is me. And what came up for me when you did such and such, I felt such and such, which is really easy to hear. I'm like, okay. Uh, hey, Sarah, Sarah says, hi, Marky Mark. Um, for her to just say, Hey, I'm being authentic. This is what I'm sharing. I'm sharing something that's coming up for me, and I'm just being real. Um, that's easy to hear. That is the opposite of uh, one of the, the, the first uh, uh, criticism, uh, the first horseman of the apocalypse. Hey, Carrie. Somebody just got on Facebook. Uh, she called me. What was that guy you called me? You got used to be associated. Dr. Phil. She said I was Indianapolis's Dr. Phil. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. I think it was. Hi, Carrie. Good to see you. Um, the second, uh, I don't know, know if these are in order, by the way. I'm going to save the worst one for last. The second, um, of the four horsemen of the apocalypse is defensiveness. Does any does anybody out there know any but anything about defensiveness? We call it shame. Oh, I didn't finish my plus minus thing. Let me finish that up real quick. A, a codependent response is, "I do suck, but everybody else is cool," and. Minus, minus is a really dark place. Minus, minus is hopelessness, distrust of the universe, and your spouse sucks in your estimation. And it's a very scary, dark place. So, um, so what defensiveness is, is right under a person's psychological defense mechanisms, which if you're a healthy person, your defense mechanisms are, my wife says, um, no, wouldn't know anything about defensiveness. I'm going to tell stories on you, honey. Um, David said he's been in minus minus and done that. That's a bad, man, it's a bad, bad place to be. You hate yourself and you distrust the universe and you think your partner is a real stinker. So somebody who is psychologically healthy has flexible psychological defense mechanisms that looks like this. Anybody who's worked with me has seen this. Polly's moving around. What's up, baby? See his diaper? Um, 
the defense mechanisms are penetrated usually by marital problems, marital issues, marital pain. But for most people, right under the defense mechanisms is shame. And what I mean by shame is oversensitivity to critiquing. Jilligan says, I don't think I've ever been quite minus minus, but I've been close to back in my teenage years. Minus minus. Minus minus is, is where people uh, commit suicide if they stay there for very long. It's a very dangerous place to be. Shame. Let's say somebody comes along and they criticize you this much. If you have shame, what you hear is this much. And then you might react this much. And whoever's talking with you, they're like, dude, I'm just trying to say this. Why don't you chill? Um, Gottman says, defensiveness is self-protection and retaliation to ward off a perceived attack. It's shifting the focus away from the problem onto the partner's flaws. The problem isn't me, it's you. This is where I'm going to tell a story about my wife. Honey, uh, I'm just doing this to teach the people. Um, don't get defensive now. But uh, of late, uh, my wife and I both have been practicing being non-reactive and coming from our and not our wounded little kid part. And we we went the entire weekend. Neither of us got reactive. Long weekend from Thursday to Tuesday. Had a lot of fun. Um, but you should see her ride motorcycles. She's getting really good at it. Um, but before uh, we learned how to be non-reactive and in our adult selves, um, I, I could be a petulant, angry, sometimes raging toddler infant. Um, but <clears throat> when it comes to the shame thing, um, my, uh, my wife, I would bring something up about something that she does, and she would flip it around. Even in a therapy session, she'd flip it around. Well, you've never done that? Well, you did such. And I'm like, we ain't talking about me. We're talking about you. You know, you done flipped it around. Don't be flipping stuff around. Let's stay with what we got here. Uh, Steve says meditation is good for non-reactivity. It is. <laughs> Andrea says spot on with the finger visualization. Where's the camera at? Oh, there it is. Um, pointing the finger at the other person. Um, so, uh, uh, when I'm, whenever I'm working with a couple, um, uh, in therapy, um, if either person becomes defensive, I cut it off. If they're a brand new couple that I've never seen, I let it go on for just a few minutes, but I don't let it go on that long. And I cut them off. I said, I hold on, hold. And sometimes it takes me two minutes to get them to shush. Usually all I have to do is say, let's hold on. Let's redirect. Take a deep breath. You're both being defensive. And then I explain shame. And I explain in my sessions, I won't allow it. It's a waste of time. If you're going to have shame and throw rocks at each other, you can do that at home for free. Nasty Badger says, hi, Mark. I appreciate your vulnerability and being honest. Nice way to demonstrate self-reflection. Thank you very much. So um, the guy that Jerry Wise gets most of his theories from 
and that I get a lot of my theories from and is really the uh, seed for family tree counseling approach, uh, family tree counseling, uh, our approach of using a genogram or a family tree is a 1950s theorist and therapist named Murray Bowen. And Dr. Bowen, one time, I know some of you have um, told me uh, this, uh, I've told you this story before. Yes, I do wear the, the, the referee shirt. Um, but one day, Dr. Bowen was seeing an advanced couple. Uh, couples who, who are real advanced in their therapy, um, they sit down, they point the chairs at each other, and they address each other instead of funneling it through the therapist. When when people come in and they're all fussy britches with each other, they have to funnel the therapy between um, the therapist, which is fine, but you get a, a really advanced couple and they sit there and just converse with each other in a safe and healthy manner. So Dr. Bowen noticed that they were conducting themselves in a safe and healthy manner. And he went the entire session and didn't say a single word. And Dr. Bowen was a very famous man, and the guy, this is back when people wrote checks. So the guy was writing him a big fat check. He said, Dr. Bowen, what'd you do to earn this big fat check that I'm writing for you? And Dr. Bowen says, I provided you with a safe space. Um, uh, Jen says, didn't people shun therapy back then in the 50s? Um, they did, but, uh, Dr. Bowen, uh, got a lot of his theories from working at a place called the Menninger Clinic in Kansas City or in Kansas somewhere. And, um, I don't think it was Kansas City. It was in Kansas somewhere. And, um, it was mainly studying the families of, of, uh, psychotic people. And that's where he figured out his uh, uh, his uh, approach. Shard says, isn't that sad that a safe place is not a standard thing, though? I know it's too ide idealistic thinking, but still. Hey, there's a lot of therapist offices that aren't really safe places. Um, a therapist, I teach my young therapist the first three or four session. You are in charge. You set the rules. You set the, play, the pace. You are in control because people are coming in there. They're full of anger. They're full of reactivity. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's invaluable uh, to, to have somebody provide you a safe place. Now, Dr. Bowen, did a whole lot more than just providing a safe place. He, he, he provided theory about enmeshment, emotional cutoff, um, interdependency. Um, uh, he, he, he's the use of a family tree. Um, uh, um, Rennell says, I know a guy who is an ACOA and he's very minus minus. Um, it is he for whom I watch these videos. Um, uh, some of his minus minus stuff has impacted you, I take it. Um, so, um, uh, and, and I do a whole lot more than provide somebody with a safe place, but it's, it's the beginning place. Uh, Sarah says shit happens. It changes us. We heal. And we don't uh, love who you are and who you are becoming. That's sort of a plus plus perspective. Um, the thing with with shame is there's really two kinds of shame. There's internal shame that can spiral. I feel bad about myself. I'm a piece of shit. Nobody loves me, and I'm going to go eat worms. Sort of a spiral. That's internal shame. Um, if you suffer from e internal shame, I would like to recommend the book 
Healing the Shame That Binds You by John Bradshaw. Healing the Shame That Binds You. Everybody listening to the sound of my voice uh, should watch or, or read or listen to Healing the Shame That Binds You by John Bradshaw. But I wrote an article once, and you can Google this, uh, uh, and you'll find it. Uh, it's called Healing the Shame That Blinds You. It's an article that I wrote. You'll find it on our website. It's a takeoff on John Bradshaw's book, but there's a different kind of shame. Not that internal shame where you spiral. It's the somebody's critiquing you this much and you hear this much. It blinds you to reality. So uh, Google that. See if you can find that healing the Shame That Blinds You by Mark Smith. Okay, I have covered two horsemen of the apocalypse. Apocalypse. Um, uh, Steve Blevins has already read Healing the Shames That Blinds You. Um, the third... Um, horseman of the apocalypse is called stonewalling. Y'all know what stonewalling is. It's one of these uh, narcissistic abuse terms. Uh, Gottman describes it as withdrawing from the interaction, shutting down or checking out, habitually avoiding conflict, uh, turning away, acting too busy, or engaging in obsessive behaviors, um, saying, whatever, I don't need this. So um, David says stonewalling is something that he lived with for uh, 25 and a half years. I don't know where Mr. Farley went. He's still there. You just can't see him. Fell back asleep. Um, uh, stonewalling looks almost healthier because you're not yelling, you're not screaming, you're not being defensive, you're not criticizing anybody. But it's it's pouty and it's avoiding communication. Um, one of my well, my biggest wound from childhood is I never bonded with my mother due to some health concerns that she had when I was born, followed up by her uh, borderline personality disorder and being wrapped up with a lot of different people and a lot of different things and not really caring enough to be uh, connected enough with me. Um and uh, uh, what I would do is uh, I would walk into a room and I would see her holding my little brother, Sammy. Um, and um, uh, uh, how I would stonewall, even as a two and a half year old, is I would storm out of the room and I would uh, slam the door and go and pout and ignore my mom for several days. What I wanted her to do was to come find me and hold me and wipe away my tears, but she never did that. So stonewalling can be leaving the house, leaving a marriage to the extreme, um, but mainly what it is is withdrawing from the interaction, shutting down, checking out, habitually avoiding conflict, turning away, acting busy, engaging in obsessive behaviors, whatever. I don't need this. So there we have three horsemen of the apocalypse. How are we doing on time? Um, uh, we still have 45 more minutes to go, and I'm down to, to the last horse. I picked I saved the, the worst horse for last. 
Can anyone, does anybody know what the fourth horseman of the apocalypse is? I'll give you a second to guess. Um, Annie says, I think I may have been stonewalled as a protective measure in my emotionally abusive marriage. What's the fourth horseman of the apocalypse? The worst one, the single greatest predictor of divorce. Uh, Paul Ward says, judgment. Um, good guess. Good guess. Um, judgment probably would fall more in the area of criticism. Don't you hate it when uh, somebody's given you a test and they know the answer and you don't know the answer? Uh, injury, inju, injury blue. My brother silent treats me backfire because I literally don't care anymore. That's a good way to deal with it. Um, Steve Hall. Hi, Steve Hall. How are you? I knew him way back in the day. We played guitars together. Hi, Steve. Yes, uh, it's not cheating, and it's not failure to communicate. Uh, Steve uh, Bivens guessed first, and my wife guessed second, and David guessed third, and uh, Train Standerholen guessed fourth. It's contempt. Four of you get gold stars. Contempt. Contempt is treating your partner with disrespect or ridicule. Contempt is thinking that you're better than the other person. Contempt is your partner feeling despised and worthless. Contempt is using eye-rolling, sarcasm, name-calling, stuff like you're disgusting or you're so stupid. It's the single greatest predictor of divorce. Um, it's not arrogance. It's contempt. Um, David cheated, and he looked at the last email, and he saw the picture of the uh, four horsemen. You still get your star, David, even though you cheated. Um, so as a therapist, um, the thing I like about doing teleconferencing is my monitor is a 55-inch TV. Uh, my client's heads are about as big as a watermelon, bigger than my watermelon head. And I can't see their feet. If they're kicking each other, then we got issues. Um, and he says it's devaluing the other person. True. Um, but when I'm watching on teleconferencing, I can see even better when I'm in my office uh, the subtle roll of the eyes. The little arrogant smirk. Uh, sometimes I notice people's ears turn red. Sometimes people's necks turn red. Sometimes people's cheeks turn red. Um, when I'm working with a couple and one of them's talking and the other one knows they can't talk because I'll tell them to shut up. I'll stop them. I said, stop. They have the floor. You cannot interrupt. So they'll uh, roll their eyes and make faces and <sighs> sigh or, you know, move around in their chair. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, we're not uh, seeing people in the office, uh, one of our therapists is Angie Caprietti is seeing some people in the office. But um, the, the reason that we're not doing this is we would be required as therapists to wear a mask. And I feel like a bank robber. I feel like a clown bank robber where I'm wearing a mask. I don't mean to make fun of COVID or anything, but I, I feel like a clown who's a bank robber. I feel ridiculous. Plus, I can't breathe or talk. But 
I couldn't do couples therapy when they're both wearing masks, especially if they have those ones that wrap around the whole bottom part of their face. They could be like smirking and making smart ass faces. And I wouldn't even know. We can't be having that. Um, so again, the biggest single greatest predictor of divorce, the thing that John Gottman saw on tape where he could uh, predict and prognosticate 98% uh, accuracy of the couples that are going to stay married or not stay married 15 years later is any form of contempt. A lot of contempt is in the tone of your voice. A lot of contempt is in your facial expressions and your body movements. So, so if somebody's talking and there's all kinds of facial gyrations going on, I'm like, time out. Uh, Joe, did you see Mary do the big eye roll? And, and he's looking at me. He's not even looking at the, the TV because you can only see that your picture is little tiny with the uh, Google Meets that I use. So he didn't see that he, she was over there rolling her eyes. And um, But uh, contempt is a marriage killer. Contempt is a killer of any relationship. Um, what codependents do is they put up with contempt. They were, they were treated contemptuously. Um, so they, um, get used to be treated with contempt. My wife says, well, crap, I guess I'm in trouble then. Um, honey, you've actually gotten much better. Uh, I would say that I feel 80% less contempt coming from you in the past, um, uh, three to six months, 80% improvement. So you're doing really good. Um, but a healthy person um, is somebody who um, uh, uh, will require people to treat them with respect. Um, one of my favorite quotes um goes like this, truly powerful people don't explain their need for respect. They simply don't engage with people who do not give it to them. Jen says, you have a keen eye for nonverbal communication. That I do. That I do. Thank you. SM, hi, Mark. What if you learn to communicate with your family of origin with contempt, sarcasm, and dis disdain? Is the marriage over before it starts? Um, no. I grew up in a family of wolves and sharks. Uh, there was arrogance, know-it-allness, counter-dependent personalities. My mother was borderline. My dad was in his own little world. Um, there was much contempt, sarcasm, and disdain. Um, uh, what, what I did was, um, for 27 years, I married what I call my anti-type, the opposite of my mother or a codependent. And um, even though I still engaged in um, contempt, sarcasm, and disdain. If you marry a super codependent, sometimes they don't fuss back much for a while. Um, but when you're raised with wolves, you either become a super codependent or, or you get a little bit of wolf in you. Uh, Sarah says she was raised with wolves and she was the pork chop. That's not good. But that's a very good question. Hi, Michelle. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Um, this is the first time I've done a long uh, uh, show on Facebook. I do every Tuesday night at 8.15-ish uh, for several, man, three years at least. 
we've been doing a live stream on YouTube. But hey, Michelle, hope you're well. Um, hi, Kimberly, Kimberly Blair, welcome. So um, contempt is the devil. Contempt is cancer. Contempt is something that a good therapist will notice in a heartbeat and point out. Um, again, much of it has to do with the tone of your voice. Uh, David says, while I was reading John Gottman's book, The Seven Principles for Making a Marriage Work, before my wife and I split up, I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> that book exposed the many red flags between us. Um, David, by the way, um, you had sent me an email a ways back about a book by John, not John, David Rico, R-I-C-H-O. It was called, uh, uh, I believe, How to Be an Adult. And I've been uh, reading one of his books called How to Be an Adult in Relationships. And it's one of the best books I've ever written. This guy says more smart stuff in five minutes than I say in two hours. He's a therapist who's written a lot of books on the topic of being an adult. And he, like I said, he comes from sort of a, a Buddhist perspective. And uh, it's very, very rich and healthy stuff. Uh, but it was because of you, David, that I learned about David Rico. I'd heard of him before, but um, I, I had never read his stuff. But it really is one of the best books that I've ever read. David, um, <laughs> I can see that you're watching the show. David, I won't mention his last name, is one of the best therapists in Indianapolis. He has a fine reputation for being a great therapist. So I'm going to wave to you, David. Um, I don't think we ever got to meet face-to-face, -face, but um, I have much respect for you, David. Thank you for peeping in on my little uh, Facebook show. God bless you. Um, so the four... Horseman of the Apocalypse, John Gottman's material, criticism instead of self-reflection, defensiveness instead of really hearing what the other person has to say, stonewalling instead of being courageous enough to have the conversation and the relationship and contempt instead of respect, contempt instead of love. Um, there's a guy who used to be in one of my groups, and he says, uh, just keep working on cleaning up your side of the street, and you'll be okay. Clean up your side of the street first. Um, the best therapist who I've ever seen, and I, I bet I've seen 25 therapists since 1985, literally, Count, counting my uh, little uh, uh, six trips to on-site and um, a short stint in, in 2015 after my shattering in a treatment center, I've probably seen 50 therapists, really, if we counted them all up. The best therapist I've ever seen is a guy named Steve Cooper, who actually works at Family Tree. And um, I had no idea how brilliant the guy was. I knew Jerry Wise, who used to work for me at Family Tree. Um, I actually uh, uh, discovered Jerry Wise, who's gone on to be quite successful and quite um, famous. Um, but I knew Jerry was brilliant, but I didn't know that Steve Cooper was brilliant, but the man is brilliant. 
his message is very similar to David Rico's uh, book, How to Be an Adult in Relationships. Um, but uh, Renda and I are actually doing some work with Steve. And um, when I'm in a session with Steve, I'm able to shift out of my reactive self, take a deep breath, get my focus back on me, quit throwing rocks at Renda and quit acting like a two-year-old. It does amazing things for communication. If you take a deep breath and quit throwing rocks at your partner. And what Steve Cooper says um, is um, what you're looking for when your partner is sharing is you're looking for an empathetic, kind, um, non-reactive conversation. No matter what they're doing, no matter how much they're hurting you, his belief, and now my belief, is this is radical. Watch out. Um, here's the thing. Our partners don't even really hurt us. Narcissists don't even really hurt us. All they do, the partners that we engage, the partners that we employ, the partners that we recruit, all they do is expose to you what was already in you that happened in your childhood. We've been blaming narcissists for all of our problems. We've been blaming the booger man for all of our issues when all they did because we recruited them and let them into our lives is exposed in us what was already in us, which is actually doing you a favor because then you get a chance to work on it. So um, Stephen Covey um, in his book, great book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the seven habits is if you want to be understood, seek first to understand. If you want to be understood, seek first to understand. And then when you understand, uh, that feels good, but it ain't going to happen. What we try to do is we try to shove our truth down our spouse's throats, our partner's throats, and until they relinquish and give up and actually hear us. They're never going to hear you. Your partner's never going to hear you until you hear them first, unless they're highly evolved, super healthy individuals. But it works like magic. Through the years, I've been a therapist for 32 years. I've had people working for me for 31 of those years. If there's any kind of issue that I have with a staff member, I sit them down. I let them talk as long as they want to talk. And I listen and I take notes and I wait until they're done. And once they've been fully heard, I really do think about what they've said. And then I share my point of view. And since I heard them out fully and completely, they're usually pretty open to what I have to say and conflict is usually uh, resolved. Um, Anonymous says he has a book, The New Principles for Making Marriage Work. It, are we talking about David Rico there? Who are we talking about? The New Principles for Making Marriage Work. Or is that John Gottman? Uh, please, or is that Terrence Real? I don't know who we're talking about. Um, I haven't heard Terrence Real's name in a long time. He was very famous back in the day. So um, I have completely run out of material. I have zero material. Um, I do have Fernando the rubber chicken. Um which I can retrieve from a cabinet, not far, see that uh, bookshelf, or not bookshelf, 
uh, file cabinet back there. Fernando is in the bottom drawer. I can get him. He will squeal mournful tones until all of you will cry. So your job is to, uh, no, Sarah says, not Fernando. Um, actually, actually have a new, new client who was tickled to know that his name was similar to my rubber chicken. Um, what I need is some questions. Uh, Stacy says, we must take responsibility for our actions. I made mistake and now I have peace. Um, <laughs> Shard says, Fernando is my spirit animal now. Um, David uh, says, do you understand trauma bonding? Um, David, I'm probably not your world's best expert on trauma bonding. I think I've been in about five relationships where I was trauma bonded. There's so much drama and intensity. Um, I was trauma bonded, not really bonded, but trauma bonded to my mother and probably in about five other relationships where people just look at you like you're insane. Why are you still in that relationship? What are you getting out of it? That's my experience. Soren has a question. How do we deal with emotional flashbacks that lead to us becoming infantile? <laughs> I was at a hospital orientation and I was transferred back to being eight. It was very difficult to continue. I don't mean to laugh at you, Soren. Um, it just tickled me because I get turned into, um, uh, uh, honey, uh, can you under can you type in trauma bonding? Actually, Renda has a video on trauma bonding that she did within. It was like two uh, or three. It was like three shows ago. Um, so, uh, uh, David, check that out. Trauma bonding by Renda Smith on our channel, or you can email her at her email address. Um. So I frequently um, have memories and triggers that trigger me either back into being infantile or being a little kid or um, having PTSD reactions to what happened in 2015 when I uh, found out uh, my partner had been was basically a sex addict and she'd been cheating our entire relationship, something horribly. And I heard very, very horrible stories. So Soren, this is what has worked for me. Um, working five and a half years really hard on healing the wounds, not only of the shattering, but also of the underlying family of origin issues. Um, uh, taking a deep breath or five, um, sometimes taking a walk and helping me pace around, uh, calling a friend, texting Renda. Um, sometimes I take a Xanax. Don't judge me. It works. Um, sometimes I exercise. You can't always exercise. One of the things I do now is I look at my uh, beautiful uh, jellyfish uh, that are really not real, but they make me so happy. I'll tell you that. Annie, thank you. See, she says uh, no judgment. All right. I When you have a question, you have to put in uh, uh uh, big letters, capital letters, question, and then there's a question. Or I'm going to get Fernando out and release him upon you. David says, are you an empath, and do you feel the energy from people around you? Also, can you explain what you mean about your shattering? Uh, David, if you go back to about 
December of 2015, the videos, including the 50 symptoms of narcissistic abuse, I talk all about my shattering. It's, it's when you don't just get broken in a relationship, you get shattered into a million pieces. Um, you know what is weird about me is in real life, I'm really not an empath. In real life, I'm sort of an oblivious dork, if the truth be known. Um, my wife will affirm that diagnosis. Um, but in a therapy room, um, when I'm focused on the client, I'm very much an empath, and I can pick up on the slightest little bit of emotion, the slightest little glazing over of the eyes. Um, uh, my wife says there was a question from Marlene. My husband and I are stonewalling each other. How do we change that? That's very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. David, thanks for staying on Facebook, by the way. I respect you. Um, what I've been learning is it only takes one partner to start acting like an adult and stop acting like a child and look beyond the other person's reactivity and immaturity. If one person will do that and seek to have that empathetic, graceful, loving, understanding conversation, then, um, then one person isn't stonewalling anymore, Marlene. And if one person consistently ceases to stonewall, then the other person puts down their weaponry true too. So um, <laughs> my wife says she either neither confirm nor does, does deny that I am an oblivious dork. But I am an empath when it comes to working with clients. It's, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's a, a gift. Um, and, uh, uh, it's so wonderful to be able to see emotion surfacing. And it's a little bit like delivering a baby where you are gentle and, you can see the person trying to push their emotion down and you say, let that come up and you quit using words and you just listen. And when you just listen, it is amazing how emotion surfaces. It comes in waves. I call it deep processing and Wilson Schaaf called it deep processing. And I stole her term for it, but um, uh, uh, it comes in waves and you'll cry. I had a beautiful session um, not long ago with uh, a woman who she pretty much cried in waves of five minutes throughout our whole 60 minute session. And then she went and laid down in bed and cried for four more hours. And it was such a life changing experience. Okay, any other questions? Stacy says she loves the jellyfish and wants to get some. If you will go to Amazon.com and type in the search for uh, fake jellyfish, you'll get a bunch of products just like this. You can get them for 30 bucks. I got the $60 model because I wanted really good jellyfish. But I don't know if the $30 model is just as good, but anywhere from $30 to $60, and you too can have uh, jellyfish in your own home. Okay. I'm going to go get Fernando. I don't see any other questions, so I have no resort but to go get Fernando the rubber chicken. I should keep Fernando out where he uh, can be a, a source of, 
of threat. Okay, David is sharing, so hold on, Fernando. David says, I scored 16 on Judith Orloff's empath test. My best friend of 32 years, 32 plus years, scored a 17. Another friend of 21 years scored a 15. I'm trying to figure out why I keep being pulled, pulled towards you. Um, I don't know, David. I think um, there's still perhaps some things to learn from, from this old uh, oblivious dork. All right. Ask for it. Soren, how can I get crazy women to stop hit, stop hitting on me? <laughs> it's as if a nurse in a psych ward gives the patients my name, number, and address. Um just keep working on yourself, Soren. That sounded like a joke, but I know it isn't a joke. Um Back when I was 45, I'm 61 now, but 45 to 55, really 45 to about uh, 50, um, uh, my unresolved issues with my mother um, came up and uh, quite often. And uh, what would happen is I, I was a magnet for borderlines and narcissists. And um, I'm not the greatest looking guy in the world. Um, but back then, it was like this magical, um, mesmerizing power of, um, <laughs> of uh, crazy women who thought I was uh, very attractive. So just keep working on yourself, Soren. I have to tell you that I really don't think crazy women are attracted to me anymore. I don't get pinged. You know how one submarine will ping another submarine to see if that submarine is still there? Um, that's what people do when they're checking you out. They ping you. Stacy Diggs Fernando. <coughs> Good night, Sarah. Good evening. Thank you for... Uh, Sarah once uh, taught me, uh, I learned so much of what I know from, from people, um, a, a book that helped me a lot. So thank you, Sarah. Good night. Um, yeah. So keep working on yourself, Soren. If you sense a crazy woman checking you out and pinging you, ignore them. Walk away from them. Jenny has a question. What effects do you think the pandemic has had on couples that you're seeing lately? I suspect it's brought out the worst in many of us. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 this week it's been a little slower, but for the last three weeks, I think due mainly to the pandemic and to how well telecommunication works um, uh, in doing therapy. Um, I was literally getting two and three, sometimes four referrals a day. Uh, this time last year, I'd get four a month. I would get four a day. So depression is mounting up because, like for me, I can't play basketball. I can't go to the Monon Center and play basketball. I, I, I talk about putting on the COVID-19 pounds. I put on the COVID-38 pounds because I can't play basketball and I'm staying home. My wife, we went to Applebee's last night. I said, no dessert. She got two scoops of ice cream and two big uh, hot, yummy brownies. What could I do? Um, okay, I'm getting off track. But yes, the couples have been greatly impacted. They're uh, working at home together. 
with kids up in their business. They don't have privacy. They can't take care of themselves. And uh, there's a lot of sad people. There's a lot of wounded people. And business is really good for a good therapist. Really, really, really good. Uh, Martha says, uh, how do you disentangle from crazy, narcissistic, toxic, sociopathic parents as an adult child? I'm 47, the eldest of three girls, and I'm parentified since I was eight years old. They are draining me terribly. Um, this is going to sound mean. I don't mean I, I love my parents, but uh, mine died <laughs> is how I got away from them. Um, Martha, um, uh, there are a lot of good videos by Jerry Wise about individuating from dysfunctional family of origin, people like your parents. So check out Jerry Wise's uh, videos on how to. There is no how to. It's about becoming healthier. It's about healing the wounds of your childhood. It's about learning how to set boundaries. But you can't just get an answer. This is how you do it and go do it. <clears throat> Anonymous, this is what I did. Um, uh, I bought these books and I studied my ass off. Knowing how important it is and what's going to happen if you don't do it is a big motivator. You're talking about all the good books that you can read. Uh, Sarah, we thought you went to 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 uh, turn off the show, but you're still with us. Sarah says, I've been crying a lot lately. Sarah, that's a good thing. It's a gift. It's a sign of strength. It's one of the best things that you can do. It's how God made us. Um don't be sorry for Sarah. Be happy for Sarah. That's a gift. Um, I've had days when I'm carrying around a heaviness in my spirit. I'm grumpy. I'm sad. And then I talk with Rinda on the phone, and I cry for five minutes, and it, it cleanses me and changes my whole body chemistry. And five minutes later, Honestly, it feels like the weight of the world is lifted off of me. Crying is freaking awesome. Uh, Sarah says she talks to Jesus all day. Can't, nothing wrong with that. So. Ah! Ah! I need questions. Ah! Ah! Isn't, that, isn't that just such a sad sound? Uh, if anybody has any questions, we have eight minutes, or we could end early, or Fernando could sing. It's all up to you. Anybody have any final questions about the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Again, my wife says she dislikes the chicken. <laughs> Honey, do you find it unprofessional that I play with my rubber chicken? I bet she does. Um, again, I recommend highly the author David Rico and the book uh, uh, Being an Adult, uh, How to Be an Adult in Relationships. I've learned more from that book and from Steve Cooper. I'm trying to call it. It hurts my wife's ears. Is that too loud? Perhaps I should hold him back and cover his mouth to keep. Um, um, Jilligan says, go ahead and end early. Take a little time off. You deserve it. Um, Ren and I did have a very busy weekend. Did I tell you that we rode horses? We rode motorcycles. We rode boats. We rode in my convertible. We rode bicycles. I was, uh, I was trying to convince her that I'm fun. I'm fun and funny, but I don't know that if I uh, um, convinced her of that. Uh, David, I am open to corresponding with you via email. It's just on days like 
uh, tomorrow and Thursday, I'm booked back to back. So I, um, I can't, uh, and then, uh, and then Friday I'll be recuperating. So just understand that, um, if you email me, try to make it not super long and, um, give me four or five days to get back with you. And I'd be, I would be glad to uh, correspond with you, David. Uh, Soren said, uh, Jelligan says Fernando needs a COVID mask. I don't know if he's been tested. So that is a good point. Soren says, I love all of you folks. You mean the world to me. Thank you for your wisdom, Mark and Renda. I've been blessed by you too, really. Stacy says, praying, uh, crying and praying. Uh, she does that too. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Shard says, first time here. It's been very insightful. And thank you for the stream. David says, thank you. Sarah sends two hearts. I am going to check out of my Facebook thing. It's been fun to do the Facebook thing as well. I'm going to continue to do this. It's It's been cool. So I'm going to press the finish button. So we're ending the live stream on Facebook. And hey, I had fun tonight. Uh, I was energized by lots of quality time with my wife over the weekend. A lot of times I um, am sort of tired by the time I get to the show, but I was pretty invigorated and uh, John Gutman has some awfully good material. Plus, there's the jellyfish and Fernando. So i got to press the share button with Facebook. Thank you for watching the show tonight. I don't know where the little button is. There it is. I enjoyed it. Keep working on yourselves. Let us know if you need anything. Thank you for watching and God bless.